Good morning, everyone. Happy, happy Wednesday. We have reached hump day, guys. We can make it the rest of the way. This is Aria Woods here on WSU 93.7 FM, your fire station. And this, as always, is Mission Minded. It's so good to be back after a crazy week of conference and Valentine's Day and all this hoopla going on. It's good to be back and just a steady, steady week of no holidays that I know of until we get to culture chat then there may be some national holidays Um, but today is February 17th and for college students this means that spring break is right around the corner we have this the rest of this week all of next week and then we are free for an entire week of just hopefully relaxing I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to be doing. But again, this is Culture Chat with Aria Woods on 93.7 FM, your fire station. And today in world news, I found a kind of fun one and then a kind of serious one that I had no idea was taking place. But first off, we have um, some big plans happening in China. China is preparing to relocate nearly 10,000 people, not 1,000, not 100, 10 thousand people to make way for the world's largest radio telescope. Hear me out, guys. Residents will be moved from their homes in the southern western province of Gyoza to prevent interference with the telescope's electromagnetism. The project's lead scientist told China's state new agency that the telescope would further the search for intelligent life in the universe. It will dwarf the world's current largest t- such telescope in Puerto Rico. And so this 500, it's it's going to be pretty big from what I'm seeing. Yeah, I don't, yeah, it's going to be a huge one. I mean, if you have to move 10,000 people and they have vowed to relocate 9,110 residents living within the five kilometers of listening device by September. So this year, um, the official news agency said the relocation will create a sound electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic wave environment. The news agency cited regional official said all of this. And residents will reportedly receive 12,000 yuan or around, roughly around 1,800 U.S. dollars and subsidized for their troubles with some getting extra support for housing. It said um, that it was trying to also build more housing to move these people to. So imagine you are in your nice house. You know, right now you're probably driving, but you're in your nice house and, you know, you get a notice from the president, Barack Obama, and saying, hey, we need like you to move within the year. Here's $1,800. If you need housing, let us know. You may or may not get it. But we need you to move so we can build a telescope because we're trying to find aliens. That's basically what's happening here in China. Craziness. In the past, in the past, China has relocated hundreds of thousands of people to make way for these other large infrastructure projects such as dams and canals. Many have complained of poor compensation. So it doesn't look like they're getting, you know, the the right amount of money and help for moving. As well as upping investments in astronomy, Beijing is accelerating its multi-billion dollar space exploration program with plans for a permanent orbiting station by 2020. So that's pretty exciting, but at the same time, it's like craziness to think that we're relocating people to build a telescope. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to find anything out there, but hopefully... In this case, they do to make those 10,000 people's move worth it. In other world news, this one actually has to deal with your iPhone. So I'm an iPhone user. Um, I've been an iPhone user probably on and off. I know people who vow against iPhone and then people who vow only to use iPhone. But whatever phone you're using, I think this is pretty important information. So Apple rejects orders to unlock, unlock gunman's phone. Apple would contest a court order to help FBI investigators access data on the phone belonging to San Bernardino gunman seized Renal Farouk. It's a really 
interesting name happening there. The company has been ordered to help the FBI um, circumvent security software on Farouk's iPhone, which the FBI said contained crucial information. In a statement, Apple Chief Executive Tim Cook said the United States government has demanded that Apple take an unprecedented step which threatens the security of our customers. We oppose this order which has implications far beyond the legal case at hand. So this gunman gunman owns an iPhone and the United States wants Apple to help them. And they have actually two different ways or two different things that they asked Apple to do. Firstly, it wanted the company to alter Farouk's iPhone so that investigators can make unlimited attempts at the passcode without the risk of erasing any of the data. So they really want the data that was on the Sky's phone. But as you know, with so many attempts on an iPhone, you can lock it, erase information and all this crazy stuff. So they asked Apple to make it so none of that would happen, but so they could continue to try getting in the uh, phone. And then secondly, it wants Apple to help implement a way to rapidly rapidly try different passcode combinations to save tapping in each one manually. Craziness. The FBI wants to use what is known as brute force attacking, trying out every combination until stumbling across the correct one and unlocking the phone. Farouk is understood to have used a four-digit passcode, which means there are 10,000 possible combinations. Wow. So 10,000 possible combinations, and they're trying to get Apple to adjust their programming so that it'll be a lot easier. Since September 14th, or September 2014, data on the latest Apple device, such as text messages and photographs, have been encrypted by default. If a device is locked, the user's passcode is required to access the data. Entering an incorrect code 10 times will automatically erase the phone's data if this option has been enabled. So check your phones, because <laughs> I know if you have a little kid around the house or a niece or nephew or cousin, make sure, I mean, I don't know if you'd want this this um, this access, because you can enable it probably in your settings, this option. So just be careful, because your phone could get erased if you've got a little one playing with it. Um, Apple says even its own staff cannot access the data, a move that the company made following the Edward Snowden revelations into government surveillance. So that's just a little info on what's happening in the world with technology and Apple. And then, of course, you know, the fun stuff happening in China, where hopefully these people are going to be able to get some better compensation for moving away from their homes within a year. Craziness. So that's just a little bit of happenings in the world. We're going to kick it back to some music with Love from the Start by SU Worship. And if you didn't know, SU Worship did release their latest album for this purpose. It was released actually during conference. So if you did make it to conference, I'm so sorry. Please go next year. The album is available on iTunes and hard copies are available for purchase in the uh, bookstore. So you can hear this new album throughout the day on WSU Radio. So again, this is Love from the Start by SU Worship. This is actually from one of their later albums in 2014. So all the world will know. Alrighty, guys, welcome back to Mission Minded here with Aria Woods on WSU 93.7 FM, your fire station. So as promised, it is still the month of February, so Culture Chat has been revamped to talk all about Black history, um, history this month. So I think a couple of weeks back, I introduced you guys to Maya Angelou and played one of her poems. And then before that, we talked about the Harlem Renaissance. So today, I figured it'd be a good time to hit on the people we know about, the, you know, a little, not know about, but the people we hear the most about in school, which are our civil rights activists. But before we dig into that, I actually have some today in Black History Facts. So today is Wednesday, February 17th. And Huey Newton, who is the founder of the Black Panthers, was born today. Also, Michael Jeffrey Jordan, basketball legend, was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1963. And then in 1982, 
Thanalius Monk, who is a jazz player, which this is actually his music playing right now in the background. He actually died today. So, so sad. But again, this music is beautiful. And I, I don't think too many people know about him or have heard his music. So again, welcome to Culture Chat, talking all about Black history this month. And I think we can dive right into a, a video that I would love for you guys to hear, um, talking about the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So after years of struggling and setbacks, advocates for equality celebrate the passage of sweeping legislation that provides the racial discrimination, that prohibits, sorry about that, racial discrimination. So sit back or keep driving, but sit back and enjoy this clip from Black History Month, which you can also find on history.com under the videos tab. Batons, police dogs, and fire hoses. On July 2nd, 1964, the simple stroke of a pen proved more powerful in the fight for civil rights. On that day, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed into law landmark legislation protecting the basic rights of minorities. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibited racial discrimination in employment and education and outlawed racial segregation in all public places and most private businesses. Its purpose is not to divide, but to end divisions. Divisions which have lasted all too long. In the years prior to the act's passage, the civil rights movement had been steadily gaining strength. A major catalyst was the 1954 Supreme Court decision, Brown versus Board of Education, in which separate but equal was declared unconstitutional. Another turning point in the movement was the arrest of Rosa Parks and the Montgomery, Alabama bus boycott. Then there were the sit-ins at segregated lunch counters across the South. But with each victory came violence. By the time President John F. Kennedy introduced his civil rights bill in June of 1963, racial tensions were at the breaking point. If an American, because his skin is dark, cannot eat lunch in a restaurant open to the public, if he cannot send his children to the best public school available, if he cannot vote for the public officials who represent him, if in short he cannot enjoy the full and free life which all of us want, then who among us would be content to have the color of his skin changed and stand in his place? JFK's assassination that November put the pressure of its passage squarely on his successor's shoulders. President Johnson fervently took up the cause. Southern Democrats in the Senate tried to talk the bill to death, but Johnson's powers of persuasion finally won out. The bill narrowly passed and became law on July 2, 1964. It marked the end of a Herculean struggle by civil rights advocates and the beginning of a long road toward reconciliation. Alrighty, guys. So again, that was just some more information about um, activists in our time that we all should we all should know about. It's our history. Come on, let's all embrace our full history. So we are actually going to head over to a song break, and then I have a very, very special guest today for Destination Spotlight, who will be sharing his experience and stories traveling the world. So up next, we actually have Made New by Lincoln Brewster. So you guys enjoy, and we'll be right back on WSU 93.7 FM, your fire station. Alrighty, guys, welcome back to Mission Minded here on WSU 93.7 FM, your fire station. And we have reached Destination Spotlight, 
which is where I interview a student or someone who has been traveling or gone on a missions trip. And today's guest is... Grant Bell. Good morning, everyone. How are Grant you? Grant Bell is in the house. Yes. <laughs> so I love talking about this. Is like I think this is probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. I love talking to people about their experience. So first, you know, introduce yourself. What year are you? What's your major? And then we'll dive into the hard questions. Absolutely. Okay. So my name is Grant Bell, and <laughs> I am a sophomore here at Southeastern. This is my... Uh, Wow, fourth semester. Wow. That's that's really sad to say. <laughs> no, it's, um, it's not. Um, yeah, and I'm studying broadcasting and graphic design. Wow. So so far it has been pretty incredible. So you know, super blessed. God has just been really awesome to me, even allowing me to go to college and have all these opportunities and experiences. And yeah, I I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's been it's been a great four semesters. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. So you got to go to Honduras. I did last I year, did. and I remember seeing all of your pictures and stuff on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So, why did you choose Honduras? Why Honduras? Why Honduras? Um, th there was nothing really about the country that um jumped out to me. It, mm -hmm. it it's just it was kind of funny because I got the um opportunity to go last summer um because my um. My brother is the one that really loves the um, the Spanish culture and everything. Okay, okay. So the first, well, my church has been going to Honduras for about um, four or five years now or so, mm -hmm. and it was like it was like our fourth or fifth year last summer uh, that that I got to go. Um, and the first two years, it was just a a construction trip. You know, they only brought the men, and then they did bring a couple ladies to do some. Um, dresses for the girls and everything right right. so it was kind of like a work missions trip for two um for two of those years but then the third year they introduced um children's ministry ah. and that's when they got to meet um some pastors in the um the city of la seba and they're like hey we um i, I don't know if you've heard of castile del rey but it's a um so. it's a uh, spanish ministry that goes like and about every Spanish culture and they um just do little VBS services oh, cool. for the villages and it's just super awesome. So we had the opportunity to um uh partner with the with the Honduras uh right. Castile del Rey program. Awesome. So anyway, that's when they introduced like the um the children's ministry aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so flash forward to two years ago, my <laughs> brother was like Spanish culture, I love it. Uh, I've been to Spain, I've been to the Dominican Republic, Honduras. Yeah, this is really exciting. So he went and he had a f fabulous time. Wow. He just he raved about it for months, and he he just he loved it so much. And like, it was funny because before he went, he said, uh, "Hey, go with me to Honduras. Go with me." And I just I don't know. Part of me wanted to like be adventurous and be like, "Yeah, let's go, let's go." But uh -huh. but like I had just gotten back from a missions trip that. Uh, past summer yeah like that past august and mm -hmm. i don't know just some something in me just don't have a piece about it and i'm like uh, I, I don't know josh <laughs> i don't want to go this one out yeah i'm, I'm gonna sit, sit this, this one, one out, out. <laughs> exactly plus i i had been working at a daycare so i was like uh, you were children out <laughs> yeah i was children out and like it, it was my senior year as well so i was gotcha, like gotcha. i don't know i just i don't I don't feel like going on a missions trip like right after i graduate you know because mm -hmm. i'm gonna get this job and start working so i don't know they're just Something in me that wasn't feeling it. But um, here we go to this past summer. Um, the church introduced again. Hey, we're going to Honduras <laughs> again. And like just something in me like got really excited about it. Nice. And I couldn't explain it at all. And like, you know, it didn't take any convincing. I was like, I'm going to Honduras this year. I just wow. want to. I just really want to go. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, the the children's ministry and everything. Um, I, I work with um, our kids in, in my church. And, and just... I thought it'd be a really awesome opportunity to like right. experience children's ministry on, you know, off the grid. So that's really what, what, what led me to it. And like, it, it was just, it's so funny how like I had no interest in it like Beforehand, a year ago. Yeah. You were like, nah, mm -hmm. I'm going to sit this out. Exactly. A little bit later it was like, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it may yeah. have been just, you needed that time. Like God knew you needed that time to grow exactly. as exactly. well. Mm -hmm. And then that excitement. Oh, I love right. the excitement. Part yeah. Of God it. just totally changed my mindset. And I was like, okay, that's crazy. <laughs> and like, it was just, it was an amazing experience. Wow. I had like, you know, I wasn't cause n normally like, um, 
it's really hard for me to step out of my comfort zone and mm-hmm. go places I've never been. But this summer, it was just this past summer, it was it was not a problem at all. Awesome. Like I literally just felt God's pace through it all. And it was literally one of the best experiences of my life. How so. amazing mm-hmm. is that Honduras? Mm-hmm. So where are some of the places you went while in Honduras? I mean, I'm not very familiar with their villages or cities or right. anything like that. Mm-hmm. So where were some of the places that you visited and then what, which one was, were your favorite? Mm-hmm. Well, we mainly uh, explored like the, the city of La Ceiba. Okay. And, um, it was it was really cool. Um, it was kind of uh, kind of poor. That's that's uh, the the places that we um, went to the most, mm-hmm. and it was just really big culture shock because you're just like, uh, you know, you've you never really seen this before, and we're we're riding around this bus, and you see people um, standing on the side of the road. Um, like with their families trying to sell fruit mm-hmm. and water and just stuff like that to make a living. And it's just, you know, you don't really see that in America. Oh no. So, it's definitely an eye opener. Like, wow. Exactly. You know? mm-hmm. Wow. So that was just, that was something different. But then also we, um, were able to go into the, um, more wealthier sides a little bit. Cause like, you know, mm-hmm. a- after, after ministering, we would go out to lunch and there'd be like Burger King, Pizza Hut. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, I like, yeah. I don't know. That's one of my pet peeves. Mm-hmm. I actually got pulled to a McDonald's and my goal oh, while right. on my mission trip was not to eat anywhere American. Oh. And they were like, we want McDonald's. And I was like, oh, okay, let's do it. No, <laughs> let's go eat something crazy. <laughs> surprisingly, those food, those fast food restaurants in other, in other uh, countries and mm-hmm. cultures they are taste a lot better <laughs> than yeah, that's true. here in America. I feel like they're so. almost healthier in a sense. Mm-hmm. Did yeah. they have any weird things on the menu? Like, for instance, in Japan, um, they had a shrimp burger. A shrimp burger? Yeah. Oh, Did they have anything hmm. different like that in um, Honduras? Yeah. I think, uh, like, the the um, the um KFC we visited, instead mm-hmm. of, like, I think it was, oh, man, a, a, instead of, like, a biscuit that you normally get in, in a, here in America, it'd be, like, um, a... Uh, you could get an empanada or oh, wow. or like uh, <laughs> one of those, um, you know, those those Spanish rolls. You know? Oh my god, that's that's fun so though. It was just a little culture kind of in there. Yeah, <laughs> empanada for sure. with your your chicken. <laughs> yeah, and, and your fries. Sure. So choose it. <laughs> so, yeah, and then let me see what else. Uh, yeah, surprisingly, it was it was a very big city. I okay. I pictured it to be like this little small thing with like little huts everywhere, but you know, um. I was surprised to see um, a lot of the areas were quite modernized mm-hmm. and um, but yeah, but yeah, still kind of, um, you know, you could kind of see the poverty within the right where it was the, lacking. Mm-hmm, it exactly. may have even be like how the wealth is being like distributed. Mm-hmm. If there's That's any true. corruption going on mm-hmm. that also always plays a part. Right. Like uh, the 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 economies are just so different compared to America. And like, mm-hmm. you know, we didn't really get to see that. Um you know, because obviously we didn't get to see like what's going on. I mean, what we saw on the news in our hotel room was maybe something, but um, but yeah. So, you know, we got to see the result, and right. that that was really crazy. But also, um, it was it was kind of interesting because uh, we we stayed in this really nice hotel in the Seba, but um, the the country or the, the city of La Ceiba and just Honduras as a whole um, is known to be quite violent and a lot of like oh, wow. crime. Mm-hmm. So like we'd be sitting in our hotel room, like after a night of ministry and we turn on the news and we'd see like this really um, morbid uh, event that happened. Like somebody got shot that or something. Day. And also in, wow. in Honduras, they don't have um, like limitations on what they show. So they'll actually, They'll show everything. Yeah, There's no like TV no, censors. No discretion wow. advised, nothing. It's How just scary. it's all there. So when we were watching the news, we were like, Oh man, we should probably turn <laughs> this off. The channel. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. So th- that was just another different thing about it too. I'm but sure. It's like quite again, dangerous country. Yeah. Wow, that mm-hmm. that's definitely scary. And then to be there on a mission trip's like, God, please protect us. Mm-hmm, for <laughs> sure. For sure. Wow. So Honduras, Honduras. So many interesting facts. And yes. we're gonna even hear more from Grant Bell after this quick break. So stay tuned here on Mission Minded, where we'll dive into a little bit more of your experience. Am I correct? Yes, I'm very excited. And about even it. some mm-hmm. more culture shocks. And he said he has a really funny story. I do. So I do. I'm yes. excited to hear that. So we will be right back after Enjoy this Alvin message. Check out Southeastern University. From the moment I stepped on campus, I knew it was the right place for me. 
The powerful worship services, caring faculty, and vibrant campus life were just some of the reasons I chose Southeastern. If you've been looking for the right college, your search ends today. Southeastern University, located in Lakeland, Florida, offers students a life-changing experience. Pick the perfect career field for more than 50 undergraduate and 14 graduate degree programs. Experience close relationships with your professors and a campus community where there's always something to do, from student life events to mission opportunities to athletics. What are you waiting for? Apply to Southeastern today. For more information, visit seu.edu. That's seu.edu. Or call 800-500-8760. Southeastern University. Transforming minds, engaging culture. This is WSCU 93.7 FM, Lakeland, Florida. All righty. Welcome back to Mission Minded here with Aria Woods and Grant Bell. Grant <laughs> Bell is on with us today talking about the amazing things he got to do in Honduras. And yes. so we're actually ready to dive into your overall experience. Experience. My overall experience. Wow, that's that's like you know the main thing. Yeah, that's it? the big the big boom. <laughs> mm. All right, my overall experience of that trip was hands down the kids and what we got to do. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, I, I work with the kids in our church, and I've I've done children's ministry, but what we did on this trip was something that I've really never done before, and to do it like every day like five times in a row like in, in the different villages mm -hmm. it was so crazy but like man um you know with with children's ministry here in america and in our church you know the kids love it and um you know depending on their age but <laughs> <laughs> let me be honest about this generation of children <laughs> um fourth and fifth graders they're too cool to be in kids oh, church they're too they cool don't for care. school they're like got exactly. iphones and i know tablets. i'm like i don't have an iphone when you were, when exactly. i was in fifth grade why should you get your flip phone and learn how to use t9 like everybody else exactly. <laughs> exactly so like you know you'll go up to them and dance like an idiot and like try to get them to Interact and worship, and they'll just stand there yeah, with their arms, arms folded, and they're like, mm -mm, <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. And I'm just like, you're killing me here. <laughs> but in Honduras, it was so different. Really? Every single kid in that room, even teenagers, because what's interesting about the schools in Honduras, um, oh, that, that's something I totally forgot to mention. Mm -hmm. We we got we went to schools. We um, we uh, we practiced in one little village area, but our, our ministry was in schools, okay. like in every school in La Ceiba, basically. Um, so, and the difference are, or the difference of the schools, uh, compared to Honduras and America is they have, uh, m middle school, high school, and elementary school all, all wrapped school. up in one. Wow. Mm -hmm. So in the presentations, we had kids from like five to 17. Wow. And what was so cool about it was each and every one of them were so excited and were so pumped How amazing and is we're that? getting yeah. involved. And I'm just like. <laughs> oh my gosh! Even our even our youth kids don't even get yeah, excited. Yeah, I, I work with youth, and it's pulling teeth. Exactly. So, how amazing! So it was just it was really cool to see how excited they were, and what it was from. Sadly, I think is just because they don't get that excitement. You mm. know, like when we were in the um, economically challenged areas, you know, that's probably the places where they're not having the opportunity to have fun things and right. like have, have people come up to them and give them love and give them excitement. Especially and with how, how yeah. dangerous it is. It's mm -hmm. probably, you know, they can't even do, you know, things after school or mm -hmm. like play in the park or like the for sure. streets. Yeah, for sure. Um, in fact, what our um, pastors that we are working with said, um, what what's, what's sad is um, a lot of these kids in these schools, they, they go to school from like, um, Cause like what they have shifts like um so the first group comes in the morning they have the morning shift and okay. then the um, second group comes at night and he said um they go to school and then they're they're home doing chores and all day doing for the stuff rest of the day wow mm -hmm. and they you know they can't really afford to do anything fun uh -huh. I mean like a, a lot of times the most fun they have is like you know the tree outside when they're climbing on it and mm -hmm. and like you know the things they find to make toys out of and stuff. So it's just that was that was really interesting. But the overall experience, definitely just seeing these kids who don't get um, 
as much love as we do here in America right. and as much fun and thrill. Getting so excited about one little skit that we did. Yeah. And it was it's just It's probably a really blessing cool. for you guys to even mm-hmm. be there and like give them that extra excitement it that they can't get, was. you know, outside mm-hmm. of school. Definitely was. Wow. Mm-hmm. How awesome is that? So mm-hmm. I'm I'm super excited to hear about this next topic. What was for your sure, biggest yes culture shock so i i believe culture shocks can be positive and negative right. so give us mm-hmm. give us a negative and then cover it up with the positive <laughs> okay negative culture shock um i didn't like how we couldn't flush our toilet paper really <laughs> that was something that was definitely a culture shock because oh have you never been to a um country where you can't no we flush in japan <laughs> oh no japan. honduras you what? cannot flush because wow. the sewage system is so horrible there uh-huh i won't go into too much detail but it was awful <laughs> spare the viewers it was awful yeah I'll, I'll i'll spare the listeners out there but it was just you How couldn't even imagine is that not being able to flush awful. Mm-hmm. You know, and we so complain we about those other ways. Oh, yeah. gosh. Mm-hmm. First world problems here in America, guys. Yep. <laughs> Be blessed exactly. and grateful. So that's that's the negative. Wow. I can see why. Yeah. Horrible. Oh, oh, my gosh. I was just like, I was so happy. Like when I got home, I was just like, I'm going to just throw this in the toilet because <laughs> I can. <laughs> putting everything into the toilet and yeah. flushing it. Oh, and then also we couldn't use the water there, the sink water. So oh. we... um. Our um, our our um, the pastors we were work were, we were working with would have to brain filter water to us every day wow. for us to fill it up to brush our teeth and stuff. Oh so that God. was kind of a struggle too, yeah. having to <laughs> remember um, not to use the yeah, sink water. It's exactly, just, it's, it's second nature. You just do you mm-hmm. wash your hands. Wash, exactly. Mm-hmm. How crazy is that? Yeah, well, you can you can wash your hands with it. You just okay. can't drink it. Can't drink it. And okay. also in the shower, you're like. Mm. Like having your mouth shut and you're just oh like, oh my goodness. I was so scared. I was like, I don't want it in my mouth. <laughs> Put a but tape over your mouth exactly. while you're showering. That, that, that was the first night, but like the first couple of nights I got more comfortable with mm-hmm. it. I learned how to control it, you know. Get used to it and everything. You know, because like when you don't think about it, you're good. Yeah. But anyway, so that was the most negative culture shock. <laughs> All right, we what's would, some positives? Um, positive. Let's see. Um, I really liked how we could eat at a Chinese restaurant in Honduras and it was really? the best Chinese food I've <laughs> ever had. That how was funny is that? That that was definitely a culture shock. Um how like you know the the Chinese food we get in the mall or something, you know, it just mm-hmm. it didn't even compare to, to what like, you actually got mm-hmm. to eat. How interesting. It was very good. We had we had bourbon chicken. Mm. We had all these steamed vegetables. See, I'm a foodie, so mm. I love talking about so food. So good. So good. <laughs> um, and then, like, the different soy sauces. It was just... Wow. All in Honduras. Mm-hmm. Was it ran by... Yeah, Honduran Hon- people. Honduran mm-hmm. people. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Um, and then, like, the the, the uh, desserts we had, um, it was, like, this, this pastry. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had, like... Um, this this type of egg roll but they called it a a, a sweet egg roll it was like a dessert egg roll oh wow it sounds I know. almost like a crepe almost it, yeah it, 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 it kind of was it had like it had like chocolate in Ooh. it and but like surprisingly <laughs> the the egg was still in it it was still an egg roll but like it was like a sweet egg roll and gotcha. it tasted pretty good so interesting innovative yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> innovative yes, definitely all righty so we're gonna end up wrapping up here real soon unfortunately i just want to keep talking about food yes. and i'm actually I wish gonna I could share about food all day <laughs> i'm gonna play uh Solonius monk again because i just loved his piano playing. yeah it was very beautiful yeah, it's just so soothing um <laughs> so really quickly what's some advice you would like to give a young student here at seu or at your church or just anywhere looking to go on a missions trip definitely go (laughs) like um if it's if it's something that you you're doubting and you don't really um think you can do it that might be god challenging you Mm. to step out in faith and do it and like also if finances are a problem like i'm telling you that is nothing to worry about at all like god provides if he like if if it is if if it is um something he has planned for you he will provide and that's what i definitely saw in honduras we we got opportunities to um work at the tiger stadium scooping ice cream i had people giving me money um i got like um extra um paychecks at work that were larger than the other and like so just god definitely provides so money is not like you know money is no obstacle like just if it's something that you're passionate about and god has laid it on your heart 
go. It's Don't give it a happen. second thought. Go. So awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, Grant, sure. it has been such an awesome, yes, awesome experience. I've really enjoyed here. being here. I've loved hearing about mm-hmm. Honduras and here on Mission Minded. Again, we talk about world travel culture. I just missions trips. Just very interesting. Any Different from and the other all shows here on WSC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tune in every Monday and Wednesday from ten to uh, usually around 11 for Mission Minded with Aria Woods. Yes, she's amazing. (laughs) Oh, you're too kind. (laughs) Alrighty, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. For my college students out there, spring break is right around the corner. Hang in there. Alrighty, (laughs) have a fabulous week, everyone. Goodbye, guys.